this is Stephanie Mullen from RampantDesignTools.com and welcome to lesson one of Rampant's full line of training on Final Cut Pro 10. This training is not only designed for anyone new to the Final Cut world, but also anyone looking to make that upgrade from older Final Cut versions. Now, Final Cut Pro 10 can be scary, but have no fears. I am here to show you how easy and how awesome Final Cut 10 can be. All right, enough of me blabbing on and on. Let's get started and see what this software can do. In this lesson, we're actually going to focus on the interface. Yes, this is basic stuff, but if you're new to the program, it is extremely helpful to know what everything is called and where everything is located. Okay, so let's start by opening Final Cut. There are actually three ways you can open the program. You can open it through your Finder, which would go down to your applications, and you'll find Final Cut Pro here. Double click on that, and that will open Final Cut. You can also open Final Cut through your Launchpad, right here. Click up there, you'll see Final Cut is an image, there you go. Or if you're like me, you can place it in your dock. I think this is probably the easiest way. Um, click on it here and it will pop up as well. If you're not familiar with how to place a software in your dock, just open up your application folder right here. Click on your final whatever program you want, drag it down like this and there it would be. I have already have it there so I'm not going to actually place it. So let's click on this and get started. Now, we have Final Cut open. Let's take a look at what we see. All right, I know this is overwhelming, but we're gonna break it down in some, into a few chunks so that we can sort of get into what each part means. So here, let's start here. You'll see your event library. This is basically where all of your media is gonna be stored, your videos, your still pictures, whatever you have, all of your audio, it's gonna be right here. Now, you can organize things into events, and we're gonna get into that a little bit later, but for right now, the event library holds all of your media. Next to the event library, you're going to see the event browser. This is basically a really fast way for you to be able to scrub through and skim all of your clips that you have right here. Next to the event browser, you're going to have your viewer. Now this is where you're going to see all of your skimming from your event browser or from your timeline. It's going to play right here. This is very similar to any other editor or program that you ever use that has a viewer in it. It'll be right here. Uh, if we keep going down here, the, this middle part right here is going to be your toolbar. This is gonna be where you're gonna do a bunch of different things and we'll get into that in a second. And at the very bottom of that is your timeline. So very simple, this is where your edit's gonna actually take place. All right, so very simple, event library, event browser, viewer, toolbar, timeline, all right? All right, so I also wanna go out, before we go any further, I wanna point out a little fun fact of that's part of Final Cut. You'll notice throughout the interface that there are these little blue icons. Here's one, here's one, here's a couple over here. Um, what does it all mean? It's crazy. What is going on? These blue things are everywhere. It's okay. Have no fear. This is Final Cut's way of saying these things are active. So when you see blue, that means it's on. When it's gray, it's not on. So it's kind of a simple, fun little way of that. Okay, now that we know all the names of everything, let's take a closer look at each one and try to pull apart what things do. I'm gonna start with the toolbar. That's this gray bar right here in the middle. There's a lot of stuff going on here, so let's try to break it down into little steps and see what we can see. You'll notice this first thing, okay, this is gonna be your import media. This is where you're gonna import stuff into your event library. It's really easy, you click on it, it's gonna pull up a dialog box and you're gonna be able to click different things. We don't, we're not doing that right now, so it's okay. You'll see these uh, stars here. One's green, and one's red, and one's blank. Uh, if you want to use these, you're going to have to actually click on one of the clips in your event browser, and you're going to be able to mark them as a favorite or rejected. This isn't important right now, but it will be important when we start doing keywords and stuff like that to get more organization with your clips. All right, moving right along, you'll see this little key here. This is going to be your keyword editor. Again, blue means on, gray means off. You're going to see here, this is going to be some more editing helpful, inserting clips and stuff. It's going to be really nice. And then you'll see here, you'll see a list of different things you'll be able to do in your timeline, like selecting, trimming, position, and so forth. Um, notice these letters right here. These are really important. These are gonna be your shortcuts. Here's my advice. Learn them, use them, and then you will absolutely love them. Um, shortcuts are gonna speed up your editing time and make you look like a rock star. And come on, who doesn't wanna look like a rock star, right? So learn these shortcuts, it's gonna be really nice. Probably the most important one would be the select tool. It's gonna to be your arrow tool. Let's so just think of A, A for arrow, that's how I think of it. So this is the same in Photoshop and other programs too. So A for arrow, really nice, really easy. All right, so next up we have the dashboard. That's gonna be this gray box right here, right underneath your viewer. This is where you will find all the time code information for your editor, your clips. 
If you don't know, time code is an eight digit number representing hours, minutes, seconds, and frames. And you'll see all that information right here. You will also see this 100% icon right here. This is gonna be showing all your background tasks that Final Cut is performing. We'll get more into that later, but it's really nice to be able to see that right here in the front. Okay, moving right down the toolbar, we come to what I like to call the Make My Stuff Awesome corner. It's actually called the Media Browser, but hey, I like to call it that. And it's all this stuff right here. This is where you're gonna find your color correction, your text effects, your audio options, different kinds of effects like black and white and all that stuff. You're gonna find that all right here. And what's really cool about Final Cut Pro 10 is that you can add all of these effects and you can actually see them in real time. It's pretty neat. Let me show you how that works. So if you go over here to your timeline, you actually click on a, a clip right here and then pull up all the effects right here. This is gonna give you a list, but we're, we're not gonna get in depth into the effects right now, but I just wanna show you how cool this is. So you have your clip selected here, and you can go over here and scrub through these, and then you can see these in real time, how they affect your clip. That's really nice. All right, so here's some more effects, just some different ones. Here we go, pretty cool. And what I like about this is because I can scrub through these, I can actually save time. I don't have to drag a bajillion clips on top of my timeline. Does this one work? Does that one work? No, I can just go right over here and scrub through it and say, okay, that looks really good. And then I can apply it. I'm not gonna do that now, but just wanted to show you how neat that was. All right, so we're gonna actually close that out. All right, we're gonna go, I wanna also show you that you can go up here to the window as well to find those same things. You can go down to Media Browser. Remember my awesome corner, Media Browser right here. And all those same effects are gonna be shown right here. So it's pretty nice. So if you don't like this, you can always go to the window at the top and find everything you like. All right, now that we've talked about the toolbar, let's talk about the event browser. That's this window right here that's gonna hold all of your clip previews and everything that you see here. Now, if you wanna organize your clips, like name and duration and stuff, you can group them here. You can right click here and make sure when you're right clicking, you're not right clicking on a clip. That's gonna pull up clip information. But if you click right here on the gray part, you're gonna be able to group clips and arrange clips this way. Um, you can do the exact same thing down here in the bottom on this little sprocket. If you click on the sprocket, you're gonna be able to group events here as well. It's kind of important to know, especially if you have a lot of stuff going on in your event browser and you wanna see things in a little bit more clearer. All right, so you can also decide on how much you see of the clips. Right now you're seeing every clip that I have right here in this in the event browser, but maybe I wanted to see this clip and I wanted to get more detailed. So I go down here to the duration slider and I dial that back. And the more I go, the more clip I see of just that one. So now here's this clip, here's the whole thing. You can see it in really slow. Okay, this is really important if you were doing your ins and outs, which we're not talking about now, but it's good to be able to zoom in on your clips. You'll notice this jagged edge right here at the end. That just indicates to me that the clip continues on the next line. So it's not the end of the clip. Pretty nice, okay? Uh, let's go back to all so we can see all of our clips. Like I was showing before, it's really easy to scrub through your clips. You don't even have to select them. You just take your mouse, um, hover over top of the clip that you want, drag left and right, and there you can see all of your clips. Really, really nice, really, really easy. Um, if you do select a clip, It'll have a yellow border around. This is important for when you're actually putting them down into your timeline. Uh, so right now we have this clip selected, then we have this clip selected, okay? You'll also notice, notice that when, you, when I click inside of a clip, uh, it's gonna leave this really thin white line in the middle. That's gonna be really important when we start indicating, like I said, our ins and outs, but right now it's not really important. Uh, if you don't like this skimming right here, kind of gets annoying, especially if you have audio going. I don't have audio with these clips, but if you did have audio, you'd hear this kind of sound. So if you want to actually turn that off, you actually can just press S, and that actually turns off the skimming. So I turn back on the skimming, real easy. If you push Shift S, if you had audio, it would actually turn off the uh, skimming for the audio, so you wouldn't have that garbly sound going on while you were skimming your clips. So pretty simple, S and Shift S for your, for your skimming options. Okay, so you can also view clips as a list. Right now we're seeing views in the thumbnail form, and that's indicated by this blue right here. If you click right here, you're gonna be able to put them in a list. This is really nice because it allows you to isolate only one clip at a time. Here you'll see your clip at the top in the preview. If you click each one, it'll show different ones, okay? You can also, you're gonna, it's gonna be the same thing. Skimming's the same. You can click and put your, uh, bar here wherever you want for your ins and out points. Uh, just 
some place some people like to have the list some people like to have the thumbnails again it's up to you completely deciding on how you work your workflow and that kind of stuff so that's really nice all right I'm gonna go back to the thumbnail view now let's talk about playback in the event browser again that's this box right here talking about the event browser playback is really simple in Final Cut Pro X but I want to show some nice shortcuts that I think are great and will make your life a lot easier now if we have this clip select I think the easiest part that everybody knows is the spacebar spacebar is going to make your clip go forward pretty simple also spacebar is going to make your, your clip stop but did you also know that if you hold shift and push spacebar at the same time it makes your clip go backwards I didn't know that when I started and I think that's pretty neat so press spacebar again spacebar to play forward go forward we press spacebar to stop holding shift press spacebar makes it go backwards okay there are also some other great shortcuts the JKL shortcuts really nice um, if you press L your clip is going to go forward if you press K your clip is going to stop and if you press J your clip is going to go backwards and that's a lot easier than shift spacebar for a lot of people so if you can remember that that's pretty nice if you happen to hold K and L together you're going to have a slow motion forward that could be nice all right if you press spacebar if you hold K and J together you're going to get a backward slow motion so also very nice um, if you hold K down and tap L it's gonna go forward one frame as you can see down in your uh, down here in the dashboard you're gonna see it says 2, 201, 202 so we're going we're advancing by one frame if I hold K and press J you're gonna see we're going backwards one frame okay you can also always use the arrow keys the left and right are gonna also move you ahead one frame as well so and you can remember you can see your frame rate down here in the dashboard right here okay so now we've learned all about the toolbar all about the event browser now we're going to take a look down here in the timeline this time looks, looks very similar to any other editor program out there very easy very simple we'll learn more about how to bring stuff in and how to edit stuff later but if you take a look down here this little button this little film strip this is going to be your project library remember gray means off so let's turn this to blue let's turn it on it's going to bring up a window and this is going to be your project library window What's really special about Final Cut Pro X is that it's going to show all of your projects that you ever have ever done in this program. Um, basically, if you're not an organized editor, it may be time to start because you're going to see a lot of lists the more you work and the more you uh, put all your projects together. So my advice is to get organized. Now, a lot of people have seen this as a hindrance. I personally like it because it allows me to reference other projects. Now, in Final Cut Pro 10, you're only allowed to edit one project at a time, but you can reference them. So say my director comes in and says, hey, I really like that color correction from that one project you did. I can go over here, easily find the one that I did, check out my awesome color correction, and then apply that same color effect to my new clip or my new project. Um, I only have one project showing at the moment because I'm only for training purposes, uh, but if you would see a bunch here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this. It highlights my project. Then I'm going to go back down here to click on this blue, turn that off, and it turns into the timeline. Okay, pretty easy. All right, real quick, let's talk about playback in the timeline. It's exactly the same as it was in the scrubbing. There's just a couple more shortcuts that you can do. Um, you can still press the space bar. It's going to allow you to go forward. Um, press space bar to stop. If you press shift space bar, it's going to go backwards. Uh, same thing with the JKL. If you press L, you're going to go forward. If you press K, you're going to stop. If you press J, you're going to go backwards. All right, that's all the same. Uh, same thing. Now, you will, the new shortcuts for the timeline are going to be your uh, home key, your end keys, and your up and, down, up and down arrow. So if you press home, it's going to take you to the beginning. Um, if you press end, it's going to take you to the end. If you press up, it's going to take you, see how it's, it shifts to the first frame of every clip? Same thing with down. It's going to take you to the beginning of each clip. All right, so that's kind of nice, kind of fast. Um, you can also zoom in. If you want to zoom into your timeline, you can go down here to the scroll bar. You can actually zoom in. You can zoom out. You can also use your command minus and your command plus keys as well. Command minus is going to zoom out. Command plus is going to zoom in. So that's pretty nice. Very similar to Photoshop and other editing programs that you've ever used. Um, so that's pretty much it for the timeline. Again, we did playback and stuff. So now you've learned event browser, the toolbar, and the timeline. That's pretty much it. There's only one more thing to learn, and that's the most exciting of all, how to close Final Cut. 
Um, what's really nice about Final Cut is that you don't have to save anything. Final Cut is always saving stuff in the background, although if you're like me, it will be really hard to break that Command S habit. But anyway, it's always saving. If you wanted to save a version of your project, like a, a duplicate copy, it's really simple. All you do is click on your project, you go up here to File, and you go down, to, oh, I gotta click on my project. Go to my project, click on Duplicate Project right here, it's also Command-D, and this is just going to make a copy of it. Here you'll see different options that you can have. You can duplicate just your project, you can put your clips with it, you can reference stuff. All this stuff is, is up to you. Um, you don't need to do a duplicate, but if you wanted to, there would be where you would do it. Um, and that's it. Uh, once you do that, you are finished. You can either head up here to Final Cut Pro, click this, or you can click Command-Q, and that's it. You're done. And there you go. You are now 100% familiar with the Final Cut Pro 10 interface. Now you can go watch the thousands of Final Cut Pro 10 tutorials on YouTube and at least understand what they are talking about. But if you want to learn more about Final Cut Pro Basics, check out my other Final Cut Pro tutorials at RampantDesignTools.com. Again, this is Stephanie Mullen with RampantDesignTools.com and I can't wait to show you more of what Final Cut Pro 10 has to offer. Thanks for watching.